Hey everyone, let's talk about something important, self-esteem. It's how you feel about yourself and having low self-esteem can make life a lot harder. But don't worry, there are ways to fix it. We're going to dive deep into nine signs of low self-esteem and more importantly, how to start building yourself up. Brought to you by JC Shigog, emotional intelligence expert and professional development coach. Because you deserve to feel good about who you are. Have you ever noticed how hard it is to simply receive a compliment when you're struggling with self-doubt? It's like that little voice inside says, they're just being nice or I don't deserve that. But here's the truth. You are worthy of kind words. Start small. Look in the mirror every morning and find one thing you genuinely like about yourself. Your smile, your hair, your determination. Say it out loud. It feels weird at first, but it gets easier. And you know what else helps? Asking for feedback. Maybe it's about your new haircut or a project you're working on. Let people see your vulnerability, your willingness to hear what they have to say. And when they offer a compliment, try your best to just say thank you and let it in. Those kind words are little seeds of self-love and they can blossom if you let them. Let's talk about criticism. That dreaded word that can send chills down our spines. When your self-esteem is low, even constructive feedback can feel like a personal attack. Your immediate reaction might be to get defensive, shut down or even lash out. But what if we could shift our perspective? What if we could see criticism not as a judgment of our worth, but as an opportunity for growth? It takes courage, but try approaching someone you trust for advice. Thank them for their honesty, even if it stings a bit. Their feedback might reveal blind spots, areas where you can learn and improve. Remember, none of us are perfect, and that's okay. It's by embracing our imperfections and being open to feedback that we truly evolve. Fear of failure, it's a powerful force that can keep us stuck in our comfort zones, preventing us from pursuing our dreams. When self-doubt takes the reins, Every new endeavor feels like a tightrope walk over an abyss. But here's the thing, failure is not the opposite of success. It's a stepping stone. Think about a time you learned to ride a bike, cook a new dish or master a skill. Did you get it perfect on the first try? Probably not. You stumbled, you fell, you made mistakes, but you learned from each one. So how can we embrace the fear and take that leap? Start small. Apply for that job you think you're not qualified for. Ask that person out for coffee, even if you're terrified of rejection. The key is to take action, even if your heart is racing. The more you step outside your comfort zone, the more you realize that failure is not fatal. It's just part of the journey. People pleasing. It's a common struggle, especially for those of us who were taught to put others' needs before our own. We become chameleons, constantly adapting to please those around us, even if it means sacrificing our own happiness. We say yes when we mean no. We overextend ourselves and we silence our own needs to avoid conflict. But here's the hard truth. You cannot pour from an empty cup. It's time to prioritize your own well-being. Start by setting boundaries. It's okay to say no to requests that drain your energy or don't align with your values. Remember, saying no to others often means saying yes to yourself. Embrace your own needs and desires. What brings you joy? What activities make you feel alive? Make time for those things, even if it's just for a few minutes each day. You deserve to fill your own cup first. Let's talk about the importance of prioritizing your own needs. It's not selfish, it's essential. When you consistently put others first, you neglect your own well-being, and that can lead to burnout, resentment, and a diminished sense of self. Think about it this way. If you were on an airplane and the oxygen masks dropped down, would you put on your own mask or your child's first? You'd instinctively reach for your own mask because you know you can't help others if you're struggling to breathe. The same principle applies to life. When you prioritize your physical, emotional and mental health, you're better equipped to show up for the people you care about. It's not about neglecting others. It's about recognizing that you are just as important. So, 
How do you start prioritising your own needs? It can be as simple as setting aside time for yourself each day, even if it's just for 15 minutes. Use that time to do something you enjoy, something that fills your cup. Boundaries. They're not about building walls. They're about creating healthy fences that protect your time, energy and emotional well-being. When you lack boundaries, you become susceptible to people-pleasing, burnout and resentment. It's like leaving the door to your house wide open. Anyone can walk in and take whatever they want. But setting boundaries is about reclaiming your power and deciding who and what you allow into your life. It's about learning to say no without guilt or apology. Start by identifying your non-negotiables, those things that are essential for your well-being, like getting enough sleep, spending time with loved ones, or pursuing your passions. Once you've identified your non-negotiables, communicate them clearly and assertively to those around you. This might feel uncomfortable at first, but it gets easier with practice. Remember, setting boundaries is a sign of self-respect and a gift you give to yourself and your relationships. That voice inside our heads, the one that whispers doubts, criticisms and judgments, can be our harshest critic. It tells us we're not good enough, smart enough or worthy enough. And when we listen to that voice, it chips away at our self-esteem, leaving us feeling defeated. But here's the truth. You are not your thoughts. You have the power to choose which thoughts you listen to and which ones you challenge. Start by becoming aware of your negative self-talk. Pay attention to the words you use when you talk to yourself. Are they kind and compassionate or are they harsh and critical? Once you're aware of your negative self-talk, you can start to challenge it. Ask yourself if there's evidence to support those negative thoughts. Often you'll find that those thoughts are based on fear or insecurity, not on reality. Replace those negative thoughts with positive affirmations. Tell yourself things like, I am worthy, I am capable, or I am enough. It might feel strange at first, but the more you practice positive self-talk, the louder those kind and compassionate thoughts will become. When self-doubt creeps in, it's easy to fall into the trap of underachieving. We tell ourselves, what's the point? I'm not good enough anyway. But here's the thing, you don't have to be perfect to be worthy. In fact, it's often in our imperfections that we discover our greatest strengths. Instead of focusing on the end goal, try breaking down your goals into smaller, more manageable steps. Celebrate each small victory along the way. Did you get out of bed and go for a walk, even though you didn't feel like it? That's a win. Did you try that new recipe even though you were afraid of messing it up? That's a win too. Remember, progress, not perfection, is the key. And every step you take, no matter how small, is a step in the right direction. So go ahead, celebrate your wins, big or small, and watch your confidence soar. Have you ever found yourself holding back in conversations? Afraid to share your thoughts and opinions? That fear of judgment that worry that what you have to say isn't valuable can be paralyzing. But here's the truth. Your voice matters. Your perspective, your experiences, your unique way of seeing the world, they all deserve to be heard. It's time to step into your power and speak your truth. Start by recognizing that your opinion is just as valid as anyone else's. You don't need to be an expert to have valuable insights to share. Practice speaking up in safe spaces, with friends, family members, or in supportive online communities. The more you practice, the more confident you'll become. Remember, your voice has the power to inspire, to educate, to create change. Don't be afraid to use it. Building self-esteem is a journey, not a destination. It takes time, effort, and a whole lot of self-compassion, but I promise you it's worth it. Feel free to share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Let's support each other on this journey of self-discovery and growth. Remember, you're awesome just the way you are. For more information on living a successful life and achieving greatness, go to jcshegog.com. And until the next time, peace or victory.